everyone and welcome to my channel about museum and heritage interpretation. Today I want to address another two terms that are often used in connection with uh, interpretation or when trying to define and describe museum interpretation and they are relevance and meaning making. Now what exactly is relevance and how do you know when a museum experience uh, is relevant and when it makes meaning? I would like to begin with uh, two definitions and one I have, I have already showed you before but I think it's quite good uh, when it comes to explaining what actually is meaning making uh, and what actually is relevance. The first one goes, the making of meaning, the construction of understanding is reached through the process of interpretation. So here the interpretation is described as a process uh, in which you can construct understanding and therefore meaning. The other one about relevance goes, museums must grow and change with their audiences. They must demonstrate their relevance to people's lives in the, 20, in the 21st century. And they must enable both social interaction and participative engagement with collections. So demonstrating relevance can also be described as a process that involves visitor interaction. Now, because the process of relevance uh, and relevance creation it takes place on so many different levels, it also influences meaning-making, interaction and uh, participation processes. Uh, and this makes a direct or a concise definition of the term very difficult and probably also explains why the term is uh, quite often used, I feel sometimes overused at museums, but without um, really being giving any further explanation or, or definition really. Uh, the creation of relevant experiences depend on the individual museum's approach, collections and methods as well. So likewise, visitors want the possibility of creating meaning for themselves uh, through participation and through dialogue. However, it's also within this interaction between visitors and museums that relevance emerges. So it is within this interaction that we can find a definition for it. Relevance theory started uh, as a cognitive approach. Um, and I'm sure you, you've, uh, some of you will have heard of it. It, it sought to explain how methods uh, uh, of different methods of communication worked really. It was put forward in uh, back in 1986 by cognitive scientist Dan Sperber and psychologist uh, Deirdre Wilson. Relevance theory is a linguistic approach uh, and argues that audiences will search for meanings in any given communication situation uh, and when they have found meaning or when they have found uh, what, what suits their experiences of relevance, they will simply stop processing. They said human cognition tends to be geared towards the maximization of relevance. So we are actively seeking relevance and meaning. We actually want to find it. Now this of course means that the emotional and the motivational, the psycholo uh, psychological circumstances are very essential factors as well. Relevance is also subject to the passage of time in as much that what makes sense now may not in a year's time, in 10 years time, in 100 years time. Uh, and relevance is therefore connected to an emotional and a practical understanding of meaning as well. We all know that opinions, feelings and levels of tolerance change. Some would argue that we are now more tolerant of different behaviors, values and beliefs than ever before in history. Uh, I certainly hope this is true and that uh, tolerance will continue to grow. But this all also influences the museum's uh, use of the term in both theory and practice. Um, so again, uh, as with many other interpretation terms uh, and interpretation related terms, relevance may be understood as both a concept and a process, but certainly al also as a practice. Um, I've come up with a definition that I hope can explain the term in a museum and heritage related context. It goes, relevance is the creation of meaningful practices. Although this definition is comprised of terms with very subjective interpretations, as indeed is relevance itself, the definition seeks to encompass 
First of all, the process of creation, either by developing new concepts or by establishing known concepts in, in uh, new contexts. Secondly, the emotional and personal understanding of relevance as something that has to be meaningful and something that has to make sense. And finally, uh, the definition seeks to encompass the importance of the practical aspect by describing it as a practice. It is something tangible, it's something real. It is very hard to find practical examples uh, as relevance develops so quickly and what is relevant now uh, may not be when you watch this video, but creating relevance is also very connected to the idea of embracing change, I find, and being ready for change to happen. Um, and, embra and also embracing change as something that's actually positive. Change within museums and heritage uh, is an interesting concept because sometimes we seek it actively and sometimes we also fear it a little bit. I think it's quite natural to be a little reluctant about change because after all, it represents a journey into the unknown. Um, I found a few examples of heritage projects that have embraced change and tried to, to actively seek relevance and meaning making uh, in their own time and to make themselves relevant and indeed a, a force for positive change. I'm sure you will be able to find um, many more and, and much better examples than these, but um, I, I just wanted to share these because I think they are they are worth a look um, and quite interesting to, to use as case studies. Mm. The first one goes back to 1977, where cultural, his, uh, uh, cultural history museums in Sweden founded Sandok, a voluntary association of museums with the aim of creating qualitative research and collect contemporary culture in order to deepen the knowledge and understanding of both the past and present. Sandok did this by forming a kind of toolkit to enable the discussion and implementation of contemporary discussion at museums. The word Sandok is derived from Sam meaning contemporary and Doc meaning documentation. Documentation refers to collection and interpretation of everything from visual, verbal and material sources. The idea of Sandok was developed during the 70s as a response to a view, review that showed how many museum collections in Sweden rarely represented contemporary objects. Uh, and at one point I know that they had quite a lot of, of member museums uh, throughout Sweden and members worked together in groups called pools. A museum chose which pools it wished to work with and financed it owns its, its own research and studies. And each project then um, added new knowledge, collections and information to the Sandok collection of contemporary studies. Uh, if you want to find out more about the Sandok uh, project and initiative, I would suggest you Google Sandok Sweden or something like that. Uh, you can find some really interesting articles in English about this. It was a really interesting initiative um, and a new take on collection and research in contemporary objects for the present and the future. Another practical example of directly providing resources for embracing change and creating networks for change development is found in the non-profit programme Off By For All. I'm sure some of you are very well familiar with it. It provides a change network in which museums and libraries, art centres, uh, theatres and so on are working together to strengthen their institutions and their civic communities. The Off By For All program is first of all embracing the diversity of communities and also setting up resources to share and develop these. The network uh, provides coaching toolboxes, change plans, progress, progress report uh, and much more for its members. A key aspect of the program is the acknowledgement that every organisation is different and will develop its own individual path for change. So a really interesting initiative as well to, to have a look at. The final one I wanted to mention is the Our Museum program, which was an initiative set up by the Paul Hamlin Foundation and it was meant to reflect how museums and galleries um, should actively set up partnerships with their local communities. So this was very much an, initi an initiative that set out to bind local communities and museums closer together. The programme worked with many different museums between, I think it was January 2012 and December 2015 to achieve this. 
At the core of the programme was the facilitation and development of organisational change within museums and galleries, and the ambition was to affect the museum sector more widely. Uh, the program was especially based on four outcomes in the work with museums and galleries uh, that it involved. And I just wanted to, to want to quickly mention them. They were rooted in local needs, so how museums and galleries understand their role within their local communities. It was a community agency, how com uh, communities actively and regularly participate and collaborate in dialogue and decision making about the work that goes on at the museum and gallery. It was capability building, how museums and galleries play an effective role in developing community skills. And finally, it was reflection, how museums ensure an ongoing reflection, dialogue and openness to, to challenges and alternative values and working methods. I remember hearing uh, a few years ago the project director, um, a talk that he did, and he mentioned that the two main conclusions really of this uh, program was one, small changes add up, and two, participation is everyone's job. It's not just the job of management at a museum, but of everyone working there. So even though you might feel that you're not actually making big changes, all those small little changes on a daily basis do actually add up. Um, and, and that's quite, I think, an interesting conclusion. I hope this gave a little idea about two very complex terms uh, and how in interlinked they really are. Uh, they are not easy to approach uh, from a practical perspective for any museum, but they are important and I think it's especially important to keep discussing them because they keep developing and they keep changing and our perspective on relevance and meaning making is in constant change. So keep discussing them is, is I think, probably uh, the really important thing here. Let me know what you think. Uh, please subscribe, add your comments, like the video and uh, let's share some more.